welcome to Coaching for Creatives with Kirsten. My name is Kirsten Call. I'm a therapist trained life coach and a children's book author. Together, we'll get the drama out of our lives and onto the page. Let's get started. You are listening to episode 15, Perfectionism. I've really been struggling with this podcast today. I not only had a really hard time figuring out my topic, but then I had a terrible time figuring out how I wanted to approach talking about perfectionism. I kept thinking to myself, this has to be good. It has to make sense. It has to be a certain way. (laughs) And because I wanted it to be super good, I got stuck. This is true perfectionism in action right there, folks. When we want to attain the unattainable or make something perfect, usually we become less productive, less efficient, and less able to do anything, let alone do something well. (laughs) So I've been struggling with giving you a perfect podcast on perfectionism. (laughs) Haha, very ironic. What is perfectionism? There are so many ways to think about it. In my case, as I was trying to prepare the podcast, I had this idea of what a perfect podcast episode on perfectionism would be. You know, it would be super organized and engaging and everything a podcast should be. As if should is a word we should ever use in our lives. Let me be clear, the word should should be banished from the English language. (laughs) At least it should be banished from our thoughts because it's such an unhelpful word filled with so much judgment, right? Anyway, what is perfect? It's so subjective. My perfect is different from your perfect. Perhaps for you, a podcast that is more organic and less organized works better for your brain. I love a rainy day. For me, it's perfect weather for curling up with a good book. For other people, a rainy day is not perfect weather. For the purposes of my life, I've decided perfection is progression. As long as I am working towards something, as long as I'm trying, as long as I'm doing, Even if that doing involves a rest or a long wait or quiet time, I am progressing and therefore I'm perfecting. But perfectionism involves feeling like our value is conditional. We think things like, perhaps I'm not worthy if this podcast episode is subpar. I'm not as good as that other person. Remember last week's episode on comparing? Or we think, I'll never get this right. It will never be good enough. I will never be good enough. Perfectionism sometimes leads to a feeling of our worth being transactional. Like if we do enough or win enough or work enough, we will get it perfect. We will be worthy. Perfectionism is searching for something that is actually unattainable. And when we don't get perfection, we give up and self-sabotage. Perfectionism is trying to be something we're not, trying to be what we think other people want us to be. I love what Brene Brown has to say about this. She says, Authenticity is the daily practice of letting go of who we think we're supposed to be and embracing who we are. So why does perfectionism exist? I think the number one reason is fear. Many people who are perfectionists have an underlying anxiety. They want control. They want to feel like they can control the situation and what everyone else thinks about it. Perfectionism also stems from a lack of self-worth. We've decided that self-worth is conditional. We are only worthy if we do things perfectly. Another thing that causes perfectionism is all or nothing thinking. If we only have 20 minutes to exercise, we might as well not exercise at all. You think to yourself, if I can't finish everything, I won't even start. So if you have a creative project that will take a chunk of time and you only have 45 minutes, you don't even try. All or nothing thinking can happen with your emotions too. You might think everything is terrible. Even though this is clearly not true, it's clearly a cognitive distortion. I do want to point out that all the perfectionists in my life are very good at things, but sometimes it's at the expense of their mental health. And many people think it's circumstances that create perfectionism. It seems logical, right? I have to write a paper, so therefore it must be perfect, and I must work myself to death over every detail until I think it's perfect. Spoiler alert, it's never going to be perfect, right? Our circumstances do not create perfectionism. Perfectionism stems from a story we tell ourselves. I just watched a really fascinating documentary on Selena Gomez, and I was very impressed by her willingness to be authentic. She expressed feelings of inadequacy and frustration over her inability to be perfect like she wanted to be. She's Selena Gomez. Why does she think she's not good enough? 
it hit me as a, such a stark example of how it's not our circumstances that make us know our worth. Selena Gomez is a star. She's wealthy. She has talent. She's got all the accolades, millions of fans. And yet she still feels like she's not good enough. So let's talk about what to do about perfectionism. Number one, notice the fear. Whenever I'm about to do a workshop or teach a class, I get nervous beforehand. I try to be metacognitive and curious about what that fear is about. Am I afraid people will think I'm not perfect? Am I afraid they won't like my class? When I focus away from myself and think about the people in the class instead, the fear does dissipate. What if I focus on hoping other people will get something out of the class I'm teaching? What if I focus on something in this podcast resonating with just one person? When I focus on helping others instead of how stupid I feel or might feel if I mess up, it helps. But that's the first thing. First, we have to notice the fear that we're feeling. Number two is give yourself grace. Give yourself permission to be afraid. It's okay to be afraid. It's perfectly normal. It's wonderful to want to do a good job. But remind yourself, there's a big difference between having high expectations and expecting perfection. It's good to have high expectations and want to do well. So you're afraid. That's normal. Feel compassion for yourself and for everyone you're interacting with. Perfectionism doesn't live in a vacuum. I have a theory that if we lived completely independently of other people, perfectionism wouldn't exist. What do you think? Would we be so worried about our performance if no one else was around to see it? I don't know. Number three, be okay with B minus work. Good enough is good enough. In fact, good enough is perfection. So after you notice your fear and give yourself grace and compassion and allow yourself to do good enough work, it's time to give yourself and others what feels like love for you. Love yourself in your imperfections. Allow space for the good and bad for the talents and foibles and weaknesses, for the surprising and predictable. Hold space for differences and diversity and difficulties and the divine. You are the only you in this world. And you know what? That's pretty perfect. Until next time, keep smiling. If you like what you've heard, check out my Get Yourself Unstuck program. Go to kirstencall.com. That's K-I-R-S-T-I-N-E-C-A-L-L.com and schedule a free consultation today. Coaching for Creatives is produced by Kirsten Call. Music and audio engineering by James Call.